For this problem, we are calculating the transverse shear stress at a location given by this dot here. It is a distance y or y prime above a neutral axis, and this cross section is located the distance d from the right end of the overhanging beam. The dimensions of the cross section are a by a, it is a square. And in this overhanging region, we have an applied distributive force with magnitude w naught. Copying things down to uh, another sheet, what we see here is that we need to calculate out the shear stress, the transfer shear stress, by using the shear formula, which is the shear force times the first moment of area divided by quantity second moment of area times the width t. And that will be equal to the transfer shear stress. When we approach this type of problem, you can look at these various quantities in whichever order you like, but let's go ahead and start with the calculation of the shear force v. And for that, we're going to go back to statics and take a slice, exposing the left side. So this is the slice, and we're essentially somewhere over here where some distance d from the right end like that okay and this slicing and covering of the left side leaves us with an open face and a need to follow the convention that we're using from Hibbler and that the shear force is going to be up and positive, and the uh, internal bending moment is going to be clockwise. Now, we don't need to calculate out the bending moment, we only need to calculate out the, the shear force V. And to do that, we can perform equilibrium and know that this shear force minus W naught times the length over which it's acting is D uh, to get that equal to zero. And so V is going to be equal to W naught D. And Notice also that this quantity v is going to be dependent on d. So at the right side, right end, it would just be zero. But as it moves toward this roller, we see that it will meet, meet up with a w naught d, whatever that length is. And in this picture, it's drawn as 0.1 meters. But it's given in this problem that we're operating or we're thinking about doing analysis at some distance d from the right hand side. Next, let's go ahead and calculate the first moment of area q. So for this calculation, we're just gonna redraw this cross section as you see here. This point, uh, distance y or y prime above the neutral axis, is the location where we're trying to perform and calculate this transverse shear stress. Nonetheless, its value is going to be dependent on the area A prime above it. Okay, so you see that this is the, um, the, the green rectangle. And we're going to need to think about a quantity which describes the distance of the centroid of this area, A prime, okay, so here's the A prime, uh, from that neutral axis. So we describe that as Y bar prime. The overall height is given by A, and for this exercise, we will say, as I kind of mentioned previously, that, we're gonna, that Y and Y prime are going to be the same thing. And the first moment of area is going to be equal to Q, and this Q is integral of Y prime dA prime, or it can be drawn as, or written as the Y bar prime times A prime, as we see here. So we need to figure out what this Y bar prime is, and we need to figure out what this A prime value is. For uh, continuation of this problem, we'll just also point out that the the width or the thickness, as uh, which is a confusing term in my opinion, but that's the Hibbler term uh, for at least the transverse uh, uh, shear stress calculation. So the, the thickness is the width, all right, but I like to consider it width uh, just because that makes more sense. I tend to think of this as the thickness, but it, it doesn't really matter. 
well, it matters if you get it wrong, I guess. <laughs> but um, so that's going to be this with a. So y bar prime is going to be equal to what? Well, let's think about um, the distance that uh, we have uh, from the neutral axis. Uh, and, and we can think of it in terms of, all right, I've got this thickness of the A prime area, and I'm only going to go halfway up that thickness, right? And that will give me uh, kind of the distance from the operating location, the point of analysis, and that centroid. So that distance right here, okay, and maybe it's not perfectly aligned, but this distance is supposed to be, that arrow is supposed to be there. Yeah, that distance is, is going to be the half of this, right, a over 2, minus the y prime or the y, all right, that would give us this thickness, the entire thickness of a prime, and that is going to be um, halved, okay, that will give us this halfway up distance between, say, this point of analysis and the, uh, the centroid. But we need to know the entire distance, y bar prime, to the neutral axis. So we just add the y, or the y prime. For the area, a prime, we have the width, all right? And that's going to be multiplied by this thickness, which we calculated previously when we were doing the y bar prime. So that's going to be the a over 2 minus y, okay? But not times 1 half, because we want this entire thickness or this entire height and okay, probably should use height probably should just stop saying thickness um, so now we have y bar prime and a prime so we can calculate q so let's move on to calculating the second moment of area and the second moment of area is going to be calculated on the entire cross section so we don't care about this a prime and in fact if we're at a different point of analysis uh, you know, where y is less or more than, than what we've selected, i is going to not be dependent on that selection. It is dependent on the entire cross-section. And for a rectangular cross-section, it's bh cubed over 12, where b is the base, h is the height, and, um, and uh, for this problem, we just have that the b and the h are the same, they're a, so it becomes a to the fourth over 12. The width of this whole cross section, this square cross section, is going to be equal to a. And so we can go ahead and start to plug in our t, our i, our q, and our v into the shear formula to figure out that the transfer shear stress is going to be w naught d times y bar prime times a prime all over quantity a to the fourth uh, over 12 times a. And uh, when, you're, when you're calculating this out, um, you can go ahead and um, uh, plug these things into, say, a calculator or plug them into uh, Colab Python and um, and you know create this y bar prime and this a prime value um, and the substitute appropriately. Okay, I hope you found this example somewhat useful, and thank you for your time.